from the perspective of, of someone in the audience, it's almost like a step back, yeah. in a way, because of the type yeah. of character. <laughs> But after you play Sam, it's all, there's nothing but steps back. <laughs> and what I mean, it's like one of the great all-time literary characters mm -hmm. in a movie that was groundbreaking in a, a dozen different ways. It like shattered records, it won all the Oscars, it did everything. So like, anything you do, is get, it's not, I can't expect to do that again. Um, but in terms of like, could I, could I be doing, you know, Strindberg or, you know, Chekhov? somewhere, and so yeah, yeah, I could do that. Mm. It just so happened that Adam Sandler's movie was cooking, and you know, I noticed that some of the most <laughs> successful people and effective people are like, are just so silly and stupid. <laughs> they have that capacity just like, you know, Adam, he's a serious, he's not just a businessman, that doesn't sound right, he's like a, he's like a padrone. You know, he, there are hundreds of people who are employed two or three times a year for several months at a time on the strength of his, uh, you know, stupidness. <laughs> and he, and he, he has to own that. He's in charge, he carries that with him. So yeah. being a part of his camp was something that felt like it would be the right thing to do. And, uh, and it's fun, it's fun to play, you know, you can't take yourself too seriously. I mean, listen, Ian McKellen who played Gandalf, you should see some of the Twinkie stuff that he does. <laughs> 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 There's enough, uh, when you put it right next to each other, it right. makes the, the contrast a little stark. But, you know, we, I'm 38, we'll see. And hopefully I'll live to be, you know, a little few more years. And God only knows what kind of nonsense we'll get up to, serious or otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the size of the role is so much smaller, right. too. So, but what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? Sometimes you start a movie, sometimes you're an extra. It was a great role, either way. Yeah, it was funny. I, mean, yeah, I love I love yeah. Doug. No, but that's it's a very logical, you know. Yeah. So it's a question that I consider too. Yeah. Are you still in touch with the actors from the Lord of the Rings, in particular the Hobbits? Uh, well, I haven't. Uh, you know, our lives all intersected so much that there are, during the you know early part of this decade, I guess you could say, that um, that there are ways in which we're. You know, Dom had rented my brother's house for a while, and then I sold him a car, and then somebody, so you, and we're all like a part of each other, but I haven't talked to him forever. I haven't talked to any of the hobbits in forever. I just had a little email exchange with uh, Vigo. Um, but no, I've been, I've been pretty insulated. I don't know how much they're keeping track of each other, but I've been, I've sort of had my head down and dealing with my family and, you know, that kind of stuff, so. I'm sure we'll all, I mean, it's the 10 year anniversary's coming up, so I'm sure there'll be occasions to interact with each other, which we're all looking forward to. We can still check and make sure we didn't have our tattoos laid off. <laughs> yeah. Um, you talked about, like, obviously, Lord of the Rings being one of the most rewarding experiences in your life. What was one of the biggest challenges that you found? Um, on Lord of the Rings? Well, just uh, the biggest one was having it. My weight goes up and down. It started when I played a drug addict in uh, Where the Day Takes You in 1990 or 1991, and I lost like, a whole bunch of weight really quickly to play like a gaunt, emaciated drug addict. And it screwed up my metabolism. So I had never been over like 125 or 130 when I did that movie. And in the six weeks to three months after that movie, I ballooned up to like 170. And look, I look like, you know, when somebody has a problem, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't funny, it hurt, it was bad. So, and then, you know, I lost all that weight and then put the weight back on and up and down and up and down. It seems like whatever, you know, if I'm fat, there's a job that I'm either not going to get because I'm not skinny enough, and then if I'm skinny, then they say, oh, we need you to put on 20 pounds to do this movie, and it's like, oh, it's just up and down, up and down. So I had just run the LA Marathon. I was in a lean, mean, fighting 160 pounds. I looked great. I was ready to rock. And they're like, well, Sam's supposed to be fat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I can get fat. That'll only take about six minutes. <laughs> So the thing was to carry the weight, I got up to like 195, 197, and to carry that fat for two years was, it affected, it, it kind of kind of ruined me in a way. I feel like Frodo felt at the top, like when it's time to get rid of the, the top of the volcano, like he spent, I felt at the end of it like, when I looked in the mirror, I just saw this fat bastard looking back at me. Like, <laughs> I couldn't remember what the other guy looked like, and I couldn't really exercise that much. I mean, it was just, it was awful. It was really, it made my experience so much more different than, I mean, everybody worked hard. Everybody was overtaxed and overburdened and like barely survived. It was non union, we worked six days a week, we worked in 16 hour days, we were, you know, you go to back, go, they finally get the feet off and then you go back four hours later and you do another day. I mean, it was like really, 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 really hard. John Rhys Davies had the makeup reactions that he was dealing with. There was like, there was a lot of different 
uh, people who dealt with issues. My issue was that I didn't want to be fat and I had to keep being fat and it was, I got depressed and it was probably a clinical term for it. So that was fine. There were other difficulties that were uh, challenging, but um, yeah, that, that was, that's the one that I think really affected my psychology and uh, well after the movie too. Uh, yes. Uh, directing question. You guys see the uh, Two Towers DVD where we did a, little, uh, did a short film and put it on. It's really, it's really, really proud of it. It's like four and a half minutes long. It's really <laughs> sweet. Everybody I've ever shown it to just loves it to death. It's really, you know, so proud of that. Anyhow, um, I am a director. I'm a filmmaker. I've been a filmmaker since I was eight years old and I had to do chores to get money for my parents to pay for the $16 for a, a cartridge of film. And then when, you know, when I finally collected all the little cartridges of film and added up, I would sit for you know, all night <laughs> splicing it together with the tape and the little splicing. I'm, I'm a filmmaker, that's who I am. That's my identity. More than a, you know, somebody who wants to be a politician or an actor. Filmmaker is what I feel like inside. So, um, so I've done lots of, you know, short film I did when I was uh, in my early 20s, got nominated for an Oscar for a live action short, short subject uh, with Gregory Hines and Michael O'Keefe. Um, so anyhow, that experience was surreal. I, I had the idea for it. I was standing next to Dom. Uh, we were shooting the Bridge of Kaz and sequence. And I'm like, oh. you know, it had been crystal. It had been growing in my mind because we had these doubles. And there were a lot, you know, I was like the team leader for Samwise's character. There was the stunt double who was the same size and shape. There was the photo doubles who was basically the same size and shape but doesn't need to do stunts but he can be photographed from far away. So three different people wearing the same wardrobe essentially. Then we had, uh, and then you have your digital doubles. And then we had our miniature doubles. And our miniature doubles were little people from all over the world. My guy's name was BK. He was like 40, he was like 40 years old and he was about that tall. He's like a little hobbit. They got regular, the thing is, and this is, just a, a fact, um, a lot of, I don't know the difference between uh, a midget and a dwarf, like there's actually science, there's medical classification for it, I don't know what it is, but a lot of times, because of medicine, modern medicine, um, little people in this country can take medicine that allows their, their head to grow to the, a kind of the size of their body would normally want to grow if they didn't have this thing. So that's not who the, that they didn't want to hire little people who had that proportionality. They wanted to hire people whose heads and bodies were, you know, kind of, yeah, proportional to each other. And uh, so they looked all over. Be, um, the, the star of, of the short film is Fawn. And, uh, and basically, they, they, were, they worked harder than all of us put together. I mean, being fat was nothing compared to what these people went through. They were, they were, their skin, a lot of them were olive skin. You know, BK was from India, she was uh, Fawn was from Thailand. Um, so their, their brown skin, they were all day long, they had painted skin, and then they wore a mask about my face. And, a mask that looked like me in front of them. It's like, I mean, no, no one would ever know it was them. It's like they're, uh, it's just unbelievable kind of devotion and willingness. They all had, always had good temper, good humor about it, and happy to be there. And so I wanted to do something that, and then we had like Tall Paul, who was almost eight feet tall. Just a member of the crew, and they enlisted him to be the kind of the hands of a human on the shoulder of a hobbit. So the camera's looking here without, and you can't see above that person's waist. You know, if it's if it's Strider putting his hand on Sam, and you've got this massive hand on the shoulder. That's what it would look like. If, that's what my hand looks like on BK. So, you know, you've got these people. It's like a circus, you know? And everybody is, all, we're all a family, and everybody's the same in it. Some people don't get acknowledged. They do. Everybody gets acknowledged for their work, but I just, I recognize it as something worthy of, you know, poetic attention. And so did Vigo, took great photographs, and lots of people did different things. Billy's relationship with Farm was so beautiful. So um, BK would go to the tops of the mountains. He was really good at chess. And we, if we forgot the chess set in the helicopter, we'd make a chess set out of like, you know, the, we'd go to the makeup artist and they had toothpicks or something like that. And we'd make our chess sets. And BK, he loved politics too. So we'd sit on top of these mountains, dressed exactly alike. You know, basically, <laughs> Sam and Sam play. He whip my butt at chess. And I'd say, hmm, checkmate, Mr. President, you ready? <laughs> It's like, how we, I stayed up week after week trying to get good at chess so I could beat him. He just had a mind for chess. He was good at it. So, um, so anyway, that's how it came up. Yes, yeah, so well, right now I'm, um, and my wife and I optioned the rights to Number of the Stars, the book uh, that Lois Lowry wrote. And we've written a screenplay adaptation and we are um, 
I'm, I'm going to direct it, and she and I are producing it, and we, we're about the business of getting it made and want to shoot next summer. So.